I feel a mighty anointing here. Psalm chapter 3. This is the Psalm of David. It says, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say to me, there is no help for him in God. Verse 3, but you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with many voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O oh my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Can you give God praise for his word? I just want to pick out that one verse. Verse 3. But you, O oh Lord are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I just want to bring some headlines this morning, what I believe the Lord has given me to preach to you. I want to preach to you on the subject called rise. Rise, you were made to soar. Rise, you were made to soar. Did you know that you were made to rise in Christ? That by his spirit, the Bible says that he will raise you up. There are many here that are under the sound of my voice that you're going through a fight. And you need to know that that is part of the course. That you were made to also fight a good fight. See, we're preaching a watered-down gospel to a generation that believe that God is come some kind of ATM. But God is not an ATM. God said, I'll take you through the fight. I'll sustain you. But you've been called to fight this fight. David said, teach my fingers how to war. Teach me how to fight this fight. No weapon formed against you can prosper, but you still have to fight this fight. I've learned in the kingdom of God that nothing just comes easy. Things of great worth mean that sometimes you're going to have to fight this fight. I want to tell a young generation, we all want that tingle down our spine. When we talk about the anointing, we all want the anointing. But when you're anointed, you better get ready for a fight. You better get ready to fight a fight that you can't see in the natural. You can only feel. When you watch those videos of all those meetings... Of 2019, what I don't, what I can't show you on the screen is that behind the screen there's a fight. That the enemy fights against your purpose and your destiny. When you know who you are in Christ, you realize and you'll be aware that there's a purpose and a destiny deep down inside of you. Oh, I need to preach on that for a moment. You're not here by accident. The Bible says in Romans, to those he foreknew, he also predestined that there's a destiny inside of you. See, when my God speaks, he doesn't speak in this realm. He speaks from eternity into time. He spoke a word from eternity that gave birth to your life. That's why the Bible says that God chose you in him from the foundation of the world. 
that from eternity he spoke your name and you were born right on time. You were born with a purpose. You were set apart for such a time as this. See, when you get in his presence, when you come before him, you'll realize who you are in him. I don't need to go to a prophetic conference for some prophet to tell me I'm an evangelist. I know I'm an evangelist. When I was in his presence, when I came out of his presence, I came out preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel. When you get in his presence, you know who you are. But you see, there are some people here right now that you're in a fight and sometimes in a fight you get tired you know Darlene I've met preachers great preachers they won the fight but they were still wounded see you can win and still be wounded that's a whole other sermon <laughs> you can win but still be wounded and that wound causes you to walk with a limp. It causes you and changes your perspective. And you, there are people in here that I know you're weary, you're tired, you've been fighting. You've been wounded. But I'm here to tell you that God has a word for your life. Malachi 4 2 says but to you who fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings <laughs> Isaiah 40 29 says he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases their strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings on eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint <laughs> those that wait upon the Lord those that learn how to abide in the presence of the Most High those that know how to wait and say Lord I'm here I'm available I need you more than I've ever needed you before oh God I'm in the presence they shall mount up on wings like eagles you were made to rise you see I love that scripture because when I began to study it did you know that when a baby eaglet is about to learn to fly the mother will literally tip it out of the nest that baby eaglet begins to fall but what the baby eaglet doesn't know is that the male eagle is soaring on heights that that baby eaglet cannot see and just before that baby eaglet hits the ground the eagle will come and he will take him on his wings he will sustain him he will take him to a height that he's never been before they shall mount up on wings like eagles So, so see I've learned right now that there are some times that I feel like I'm falling but God never lets me hit the ground he's trying to teach me how to go higher how to get a greater faith how to get a greater stature how to understand my purpose sometimes I feel like I'm falling but God never allows me to stumble because he knows at the right time I'm about to mount up on wings like eagles he's about to take me into a new season higher than I've ever been before is there anybody in this house that can shout unto God with a voice of triumph That's why Micah 7, 8 says, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. That's why the devil never knew what was coming. Oh, I, I, I got to preach this. The devil never knew what was coming. Can I prove it to you? That's why Micah says, don't enemy, when you think I'm falling, you, you, I got news for you. I will arise. God will not let me fall. I will arise. When I sit in darkness, he will be my light. I will arise. You need to tell the person next to you, I will arise in Jesus' name. Whew. Can 
I preach something to you right now? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, verse 6, However we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which is God ordained before the ages for our glory can someone say amen watch this verse 8 which none of the rulers of this age knew when the Bible speaks of rulers, it's not earthly kings. It's principalities and powers. It's the devil himself. Watch this now. Are you ready? It says, for had they have known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Oh, you didn't get that. If the devil would have known what the blood was about to do he would have never have hung him on that cross if the hell would have known that it is the blood that would wash you and make you sons and daughters heirs of salvation hell didn't know what was about to happen That's why in verse 9 it says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Can I tell you something? You may feel like you're down, but you're not out. The devil doesn't realize it. He thought that thing would take you out. But in Jesus' name, you're about to rise. The devil never saw you coming. He never saw in you. He's a greater destiny, a greater purpose. Somebody give God praise in this house. Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again don't miss that part and rise again you may have fallen seven times but you will rise again because I'm here to tell somebody this is not your final chapter you may be bound by sin but you can still rise you may be broken but you can still rise you may be depressed but you can still rise you may be oppressed but you can still rise you may be misunderstood but you can still rise you may be discouraged but you can still rise you may be praying even about your next meal but can I tell you the Bible says I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread you will still rise you may be lonely but you can still rise you may be confused but you can still rise you may feel your heart is broken but you can still rise you may be grieving but you can still rise you may be addicted but you can still rise you may be betrayed but you can still rise you may be angry but you can still rise I'm trying to tell somebody right now your trial is only temporary the failure is not final your condition is not your conclusion every barrier will become your breakthrough your perseverance will be turned into your praise God praise in this house. If hell would have known. I love that scripture, Phil. If hell would have known, they'd have never crucified the Lamb of God. That means that the devil could quote scripture, but there was still something hidden from him. He quoted scripture to Jesus in the wilderness, but he never understood its purpose. You see, there are some people that they quote scripture, but there's still a purpose hidden from their eyes. That's why hell doesn't really know what God's about to make you become. And that's why you will rise. You will rise. You will rise in the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody give God praise in this place. Can I tell you about the God that I serve? 
he'll never forsake you. When you're going through a fight, God will do either two things. He'll either protect you from it or he'll bring you through it. You remember I told you about the eagle? Sometimes in, er in order to learn to fight, you sometimes have to feel like you're falling. See, sometimes God protected you from things you never ever saw coming. There were some wars that happened over your life you didn't even know anything about. Because God said, I am the shield. I am your protector. Devil, you can't touch this. There's no way. But there are some times. There are some times that God says, no. This time I'm not going to protect you from it. This time I'm going to devil proof you. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Sometimes God will protect you from it. Other times he'll take you through it because he's trying to teach you. He's trying to devil-proof you. See, in the book of Genesis 37, you will read the story of Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph was given a coat. I call it the coat of favor. When God gives you multicolors, it means there's a favor on your life. See, you don't realize it, but... When God called you, he gave you a coat. There's favor on your life. The Bible says you've been saved by grace. The word grace means unmerited favor. I love it when the, the angel came to Mary. He said, Mary, you are blessed and highly favored. He spoke the word into her life. He said, you shall give birth and you will call his name Jesus. And you know what I love what Mary said? Mary said to the angel, how will this be? How will this miracle come to pass? Mary, this will be the sign. The spirit of God shall come upon you. In other words, how's this miracle going to happen? You'll know how, how the Holy Ghost. You know how, how the Holy Ghost. I'm about to cloak you. I'm about to come upon you. See, it's awesome when you can see the favor. People shout and praise when you can see the favor. It's like you go through a season and whatever you touch, it's like everything's favored, everything's favored. But you know what favor will bring you? Opposition. People cry for the anointing, but I am not the anointing of the, of the Holy Spirit will bring you opposition. I told you, if you're going to bring to pass what God has birthed in your heart, you've got to learn that even when you're down, you're not out. You will rise, but you've got to learn to be able to function without the outward signs of your favor. See, Joseph had a physical sign. And when he shared his dream, he got some opposition. That's where most people fail, right there. Because you need their affirmation. See, there are too many people in the kingdom that have too many soul ties that you're looking for their affirmation rather than listening to the dream that God has put on the inside of you. you got to learn how to walk in his favor without their affirmation. See, what I love about Joseph... What I love about Joseph, when he felt the opposition, the Bible says he dreamed still another dream. Like the first dream wasn't big enough, when the opposition came, Joseph dreamed yet another dream. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but the Lord sent me here to tell somebody, dream another dream. Dream another dream. See, you know what the enemy's fighting you for? He's fighting to strip you of the outward sign of your favor. 
Joseph dreamed another dream and the devil says now we've got to strip him of the outward sign of his favor. See that's why you can't be a carnal Christian. I said we got to stop moving in carnal realms trying to get a supernatural miracle. People want the six ways of the seven steps, two PowerPoint presentations. That's not going to get the job done. When you've got someone bound by the devil, your three points on a special ain't going to do it. You need an anointing from the Holy Ghost, even though you don't see it on the outside. you got to be able to move in the spirit, even though the natural tells you to be silent. Who am I preaching to right now? Give God praise in this house. See, the devil believed that if he stripped him of his outward sign that the dream would die. But what I love about Joseph, he fell, but he couldn't, the devil couldn't stop him from rising again. He stripped him of his outward sign of favor, but he still rose. Because the dream was not on him, it was in him. Oh, I got to say that again. I said the dream was not on him. It was in him. See, what I love about Joseph is he never stopped dreaming. And I'm here to preach to somebody right now that your dream has taken a major, major blow. But God's trying to tell you, even though the outward sign may have disappeared, the dream, the word, the prophecy still lives on. It is in you, and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can I show you something? If that dream lives in you long enough, that dream will become your gift. Oh, that's, oh, I got to preach on that some more. Joseph's dream lived in him so long that he now wasn't just dreaming dreams. He was interpreting them. And I've learned, Darlene, I've learned that if I rely on the wisdom of man, if I rely on those sources outside of me, then I will fall. But there's something that God put inside of me. It was a dream that became my gift. And my gift is what will take me into the new season of my life. I'm trying to preach to somebody right now. You're looking for affirmation. But Joseph from a pit, God said the dream is still in you. And that dream, if you dream it long enough, that dream will become Come your gift. Give God a praise in this house. He will still rise. Joseph is now in a prison. How many of you, if you came on one of my gospel campaigns and you came on a missions trip, and we ended up in a jail cell. How many would say, evangelist, you didn't hear from God? You know I'm preaching to you right now. Because some of you in the dark of that cell would say, I think evangelist missed it. We were never supposed to be here. I could feel something on the airplane coming over. Because we've been taught that in order to go to the next level, Everything continually will go well. But there's sometimes the God is not seeking to destroy you. He's actually hiding you. He's hiding you in a place that the ne devil never knew God could still perform his works, his miracles. You see, while Joseph was in the prison, God sent a butler and a baker to the cell. The devil never realized that inside of Joseph was a dream that had now become a gift, and the gift was about to operate 
in a place that the devil never saw coming because the butler and the baker you see a baker has the ingredients but a butler will open the door see what I love about Joseph he never allowed the attack to stop him using his gift and the people that get promoted are the ones that don't need praise of men but they just keep functioning in their gift they keep functioning in the gift whether they are down whether they are up God says just keep just keep just keep keep pressing in keep functioning keep moving God had already put in Joseph. God had already put inside Joseph everything he needed to cause him to step into his destiny. The devil only saw the outward sign, but that was a decoy. God used the coat to distract the enemy because the enemy didn't realize that that was not the sign. The sign was on the inside of him. It was deep on the inside of him. And that gift would bring him to a place. I'm from a little town. My dad is the most praying man that I know. I thought every preacher prayed like my daddy. Right now, every morning, Sunday morning, Saturday morning, Friday morning, any day of the week, 5 a.m., 4.30 a.m., I know where he is. I can see him on his knees with his face in the seat, praying. You see, God said to me, what I'm about to do in your life is not because of you. It's not because of you. It's because of the faithfulness of your father and your mother. And you see, at that moment, I knew this was bigger than me. I knew that I'd not sown this. I'd not wept for this. But it was inside of me. And I couldn't stop what God was about to do. I would have to go through some fights. I would have to go through some wars. But the devil could never strip me of something that God had put in me. And that gift has taken me before leaders, before kings. I'm telling you right now, you don't know what's on the inside of you. Give God praise in this house. Hey! 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 As a child of God, we have to understand the times and the seasons. Joseph released his gift into the life of a butler and the butler God used to open the door to the king. When Joseph's time came, the Bible says that he changed his clothes. He changed his clothes. He didn't go before the king. That was his destiny. But he didn't go looking like a prisoner. I'm trying to preach to some people right now. Because you can come to God as you are. But there comes a time that God says, now change your clothes. What do you mean by that? I mean change your mindset. Change that orphan spirit. Change that spirit that you reject everything and everyone because you've been hurt. There comes a time that you got to change your clothes. You got to change your mindset. You got to let God heal your spirit because sometimes you'll miss the door to your destiny because you're held back because you're still dressed. You still talk like a prisoner. People come to me all the time. They say, I want a miracle. I say, okay, are you ready? They say, before you do, let me tell you what's wrong with me. I said, I don't need to know. <laughs> no, I need to tell you. I got this from my toe, my middle of my foot, my knee, my knee, my hip, my hip, my lungs, my... They just go through the list. And I'm looking at them like, what is this supposed to do? 
But you see, the sickness has become their identity. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? You say, well, where's your compassion? My compassion is right here, right now. Then we're going to pray for you. We're going to believe God. You will rise again. But you got to change your clothes. you got to let faith rise in you. you got to break some words off of your life that said your daddy had this and your mama had this and you're going to have this. No. you got to let that inside of you rise up and say, whom the Son sets free is free. I gotta move on, I gotta move on. I gotta move on. See, when you understand what's inside of you, you begin to pray in another dimension. Can I give you a headline of that, but you can't miss this. See, Jesus said this. He said, have faith in God, Mark eleven twenty two. For as surely as I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Does not doubt in his. Does not doubt in his. Therefore, that means there's a condition. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. See, when you understand what God's put in you, you stop praying for things that your flesh desires. And you get into a place in the spirit where you start to pray the will of God. You see, when God says speak to the mountain, you need to know that that's your mountain. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying to you. Jesus never put the condition on faith. Because you can have faith the size of a mustard seed. That was not the condition. He says those things that you desire. Uh, can I show you? 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 Let me show you how to get a breakthrough. Bible says now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made out of things which are visible. Okay we understand. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says. But as it is written. I has not seen nor ear heard. Nor it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, which searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. When I get into the spirit, I stop desiring what God says is yours. I stop coveting your mountain. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. See, I had to learn that when I get into his will, when I understand my purpose, when I understand my dream, it changes my prayer life because the spirit of God searches all things. Faith is the substance of... Faith is the substance of... The spirit of God searches all and reveals them to us. The next level of prayer is when you stop praying about the carnal things and you start to learn how to pray what the Lord is showing you because that's when you cast the mountain into the sea because you know that that's your mountain and God says now speak to it and it shall obey. Who am I preaching to right now? Let me teach you why that's important. Are you getting something out of this? Yeah. See, God might promise you a building. He didn't promise me the building. I can speak to that building all day with great faith and it won't move. But when God says you have a building, you only need faith the size of a mustard seed. Because when God says it, it's already done. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. That's why you have to know the promises of God. 
that's why you have to know what he says your family have what he says your life has what he says your blessing is what he says your prosperity is because until you know it in the spirit you'll never pray it out of your mouth and God's trying to raise you up to a new realm to a new level of faith can somebody say amen that's why the Bible says and I'm finishing I'm finishing that's why the Bible says in 2 Samuel 5 19 it says, so David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. David goes into the fight because it was already done. But the same enemy, I'm preaching to somebody right now. The same enemy rose again. There are some things that you defeat in that season of your life that rise again. Uh, for those of you that are super spiritual, you say, what? Yeah. Some things that you thought you whooped. If you live long enough, you move in God long enough, that same thing tries to rear its head again. What I love about David is he didn't just go in the same way he went in before. He went before the Lord and he inquired the Lord again. You see, this is why there are some people that God's about to raise you to a new level. God's about to show you a way of getting a breakthrough that you never saw before. Is anybody in this house right now? The Bible says that David inquired of the Lord again. And God says... You're not going to fight this fight the way you fought it before. God said to David, you shall not, not go up, circle around behind them, and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. I love this. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching on the top of the mulberry trees then this will be a sign watch this you will strike and so David did as the Lord commanded him and he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezir here's what the Lord told me to tell somebody the first time you fought and you won but this time the battle is not yours you don't hear what I'm saying to you this time God's going to move the enemy in a way he's never done before. Because he's about to show you how to fight a fight by listening to a sound that is not of this world. He's going to train your ear to know when to move, when to strike, when to commit. When, when you hear the sound of marching on the top of the mulberry trees, then you'll know that I have gone before you. You're about to win this fight. Somebody shout a shout of hallelujah. Stand to your feet all over this place right now. Whew. Play, 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 play. Oh, I feel a praise in this place right now. See, I feel that there's some people that have been fighting. Fighting. If there's somebody here right now that you had cancer years ago and you defeated the cancer in Jesus' name, but they're saying that that cancer's come back. I want to tell you right now, I hear the sound in the mulberry trees. I hear the sound. I hear the sound that God is about to do a miracle once and for all in your life. In fact, if that is you, just come here right now. Just come and stand here if that is you right now. If that word is you right now. If you've been in a fight, some of you may have turned away from the Lord. Your heart may have grown cold, but I want to tell you, you will rise again. You may have an addiction in your life, you will rise again. Right now, wherever you are in this building, if God has spoken to your heart right now, I want you to get out of your seat, come to this altar. I want to pray over you right now. I believe God, there's a sound in this place of breakthrough. If that is you, come right now quickly. Come right
right now. Quickly, 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 come. Quickly, come right now. Quickly, come. Quickly, come right now. Jesus, I give you praise. I give you praise right now. Woo. I give you praise right now. 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 Worship the Lord all over this place. Worship the Lord all over this place. Right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. Breakthrough, Lord. Breakthrough, Lord. Breakthrough, Lord. We want to thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Shake the Nation's ministries and our YouTube channel, why don't you click the subscribe button? Also, if you want notifications of our brand new videos, why don't you click the bell? There's so much more in Shake the Nation's ministries that you can get involved in. Why don't you click also the link to our website to find out more? To find out more about our humanitarian arm, Hope of All Nations, make sure you click the Hope of All Nations button where you can learn about us taking the gospel to thousands of children around the world and our work in the ground of the nation of Honduras. We can't wait to see you next time.